So Meghan Markle, I thought I'd do a little bit of a deep dive. Let's see who she really is. Just kind of go down and get wet and come back up again and see what we can find out about her. Really, who is she? Okay, if you like the video, I hope that you will like it. I hope you have subscribed. If you haven't, please do. Thank you very, very much for watching my videos. It means a, an awful lot to me. Thanks. <music>
the uh, most true to the original artwork of Pamela Coleman Smith. This is her initial, Pamela Coleman Smith. Uh, th these are the closest to her original artwork or interpretation that she and um, and uh, um, Wait uh, came to agreements on for the way they would be depicted. Before I turn these over, I'm going to tell you. So one of the things I love about cards is when you, there's something special you can use the cards for, a special way you can identify with the cards that's only secret to you. Maybe I shouldn't like that, but I do like that. For instance, uh, these cards, you can tell from the back of these cards whether they are upright or whether they are inverted before you flip them over. And here's how. In this uh, little um, flourish here, uh, it's almost a rose in a rose. It reminds me a little bit of the Tudor rose, but it's, it's not quite that. But uh, if you are looking at this card, the back of this card, and you see this little leaf is, is sort of pointing in front of this signature, then you know that this card, when you flip it over, is going to be upright. However, if you see that the leaf is pointing behind the signature, you know that this card is going to be inverted. So see, a quick glance, it's not very obvious to you. But once you look at it for a minute and you know that secret, now you know what's going to happen when you turn this card over. So let's use an example. This one is pointing um, before the signature. So we can see that this card is in the upright position. This one is pointing after the signature, and you can see that it's in the inverted position. So, so there you go. Now, the cards themselves are great. I mean, I love the coloring of the cards. They've got kind of a, a grayish, um, a brownish gray overtone, almost a misty, kind of a London fog kind of a feel to the overall. It's like someone painted the cards and then went back and did a treatment on them to make them look kind of, so I'm not, I don't know if that's how Pamela Coleman Smith uh, created the art. I haven't seen her original art for this, obviously. Um, I'm sure some people have. But um, but that's what's great about these cards. It kind of gives them a built-in patina that's not real. You know, it's fake, but it still makes them nice and mystical. And so uh, that's what's interesting about these cards. Now, the uh, at first I was disappointed that I had ordered two um, sets of the same cards, but then um, I understood that it was a good thing. And I'll show you why that is. Okay, so now this is the commemorative set of the Pamela Coleman Smith uh, artist of the Rider Waite Tarot deck, uh, featuring the Smith Waite Tarot Centennial Edition deck, which is this. So uh, it comes in this amazing, amazing container. I mean, I can't even really call it a box. It's, it's like a beautiful showcasing a lifetime of artwork by Cam Pamela Coleman Smith. And um, so it's really cool. And wait till you see how it works. So you open this treasure chest up, and you've got this beautiful uh, finish here, and you've got wonderful little tabs where you can pull back the uh, the covers and see what's inside. And what is inside is a, a pack of the cards. Uh, and in truth, what's happened is um, these were the cards that were wrapped up inside this box, and uh, these cards uh, came in that box. But um, I got this first, and so I wanted to use the cards, so I opened it up, and oh, look at that, and I don't like that. This has to be tucked down in there, so there's a couple things that aren't perfect. But uh, so I took the cards out of here, opened them up, started using them, and then the other cards came, and I realized, oh, well, I can make this a complete set if I put these in here. What's in here? Of course, you have the cards, and uh, then you have a nice little bag uh, to keep them in, if, uh, if that's how you're going to keep your cards, and so many people do. But uh, I've just chosen to try to leave these cards in kind of a pristine condition. And then on this side is where all the treasure happens. The first thing you have is this booklet, The Artwork and Times of Pamela Coleman Smith, Artist of the Tarot, Tarot of the Rider Waite Tarot Deck by Stuart R. Kaplan and Lynn uh, Arjo, I suppose. So this is who wrote this book. In this book, it tells you all about, uh, you know, not all about, but it's, 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 it's a very good information about Pamela Coleman Smith. It's a lot of her art that's not related to tarot and explanations of how that art came to be. I mean, this is just a fascinating book, and I love it. I love it a lot. So there's that. The next thing that was in here, these are actually postcards, okay? So these are postcards, and all of these are the art of Pamela Coleman Smith. So, uh, and then this book talks about these postcards and why they come to be, and they all have a very interesting uh, story, So, which I won't go into now, but if you think you'd like to know, you should order these cards. So, very interesting. Uh, stuff here. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, next thing you're going to get is you get some uh, larger pieces that uh, this is Pamela Coleman Smith, who I understand like to be called Pixie, 
uh, as a nickname, and she's a lovely person. This um, is uh, someone that she knew, a, a stage uh, actress at the time, and um, and there's even a little uh, message down here. The the name of this person is Mistress Page, and then you are a you are Mary, so am I. Ha ha, uh, Ellen Terry. So uh, I'm not sure now, but the, the book explains all of this to you. Then you get, uh, this is an example of just some black and white work she done for, for, I don't know what it doesn't tell you on here, but it does tell you in the book. And then this is some more examples of what she might've done for playbills or uh, other ways. You know, artists have to make a living. So they use their talent of making art to uh, sell and, and do other things. So love, love, love everything that came with this. And um, amazing. Now, the final thing, and I've, I've lost a little uh, ribbon, but also this uh, has a ribbon here that, that helps you pull everything out, which is so smart and so good. I don't know who thought of it first, but it's a great uh, use of that. And then you have here the actual uh, pictorial key to the tarot. So some of you may have seen me using uh, this book, which is the pictorial key to the tarot by weight. And uh, so this is just another uh, representation of that, but just in a different book. And it all comes in here. The one thing that you're missing here, I don't think the cards are in this book. No, the pictures of the cards uh, aren't in here, but it's terrific. Everything else is true to that first book. Uh, this one, however, which I bought separate from an uh, online bookstore, uh, does have uh, depictions of the cards in it, as you can see. So that's very useful to use that all the time. So very handy to have. And then finally, like so many of these uh, decks, this gives you some uh, examples of some spreads you can use and how you might read them. And so everything, everything, everything about this um, this package uh, is exactly um, the best that you'd want to get in a, in a, in a gift. I've got, this is the one little misgiving here. Maybe I'll, I'll work on that later. But um, so nice. So that's been the tour of these cards. And I hope you've enjoyed it. So it's an interesting question, and I'm really disturbed, actually, by how many of uh, the viewers and uh, people in general, actually, are really are set uh, to decide that um, so many people are just bad. I think um, this woman's character on uh, Suits uh, led people to believe that that's who she is, that she is the character on Suits, that those scripts aren't written, that she's somehow improvising uh, what she says in those scripts, which actually that character was a pretty good character. And uh, if you haven't picked it up yet, so there's some sarcasm in my introduction. Uh, I don't think this is a bad person, but all I can do is just read what the cards say. And the questions are going to be this. So Meghan Markle, is she evil? That's, that's simple. Is she evil? And then another question will be, is her intention uh, only um, to destroy the royal family? Is her intention to destroy the royal family? And then maybe I can get another question in there to say, is her intention, are her intentions, in fact, pure? So we'll get those questions together and see what we can determine about Meghan Markle. So is she evil? Is she ill-intentioned against the royal family? And um, we'll see where that goes. So six cards right off the bat. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Is this an evil woman? Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle, ill-intentioned, evil, is that who this woman is? The signifier card, then, is the sun. Well, the sun is a very good card to get if you're having some, some cards read about you because the sun is enlightenment. It's uh, shining um, a, a spotlight on a subject and um, is indicative of celebrations, of success, of revelations, and especially enlightenment. So, interesting. The challenge to this sun card as a signifier for whether she's uh, evil is, huh, that's very interesting. So holding on to your value. The uh, Four of Pentacles is often um, uh, associated with security, wealth, financial gain, power, greed, and uh, monetary hoarding. So there is that element, it looks like, that's the challenge to this enlightenment. Okay? The basis of this reading, then, is the Nine of Cups, which is kind of known as the greedy merchant. And the greedy merchant is the person who is... Um, they're fortunate, they're healthy, 
they have an abundance and they want to display it. They're, sh they're showing their abundance, their emotional security uh, to the world for display. And they're very proud to do that. So is that evil? We'll, we'll, we'll decide. The past of this reading then is uh, the Wheel of Fortune. And the Wheel of Fortune speaks to us of how uh, things can turn on a dime. I mean, when you're um, worrying about what your fortune is going to be, then you've got to know that there's going to be change, there's movement, uh, it may involve travel. But I always like to think that when the Wheel of Fortune comes up, it's uh, because I do uh, try to uh, have positive readings, put a positive spin on bad information. So we can see that the Wheel of Fortune is turning. There is usually a difficult period that you're going to go through, but this Wheel of Fortune is in the past. So it seems to me that her Wheel of Fortune has turned and uh, so it has become uh, fortunate for her. And uh, this uh, could be the period that she's going through right now. In the sky for this reading, asking, is this woman just evil, a fool? So it's a new journey. And it kind of melds with what uh, she came out of. The Wheel of Fortune has turned, and she's now on a new journey. Okay? And then the final outcome for Megan, evil, is the Emperor. And the Emperor card is always talking to us about, oh gosh, how do you want to put it? Like um, the Emperor card is always talking to us about uh, intellect and uh, power and control. So let's go over it again to see if we can find the answer to whether this woman is evil. It doesn't seem to be a, a parent, very apparent that she is, but uh, the signifier card was the sun, and that's wanting to have enlightenment. It's a challenge by hoarding, okay, holding on to what you what you you accumulated. If you want to consider that she is from a poor background, that kind of makes sense. Uh, I know I feel that way myself sometimes. Uh, in the uh, the basis of the whole thing is the greedy merchant. And uh, I use that uh, kind of negative explanation really, honestly, just to soothe some of the readers who have this opinion of her. Because the greedy merchant is someone who has achieved and has accomplished, and uh, but maybe wants to show it to the world. And uh, in the past of the reading is the Wheel of Fortune, which seems to have turned in her favor considerably since she became uh, an adult. And uh, and now the fool up in the sky just is indicative of a new journey. And it may be that she's constantly on a new journey, a new journey uh, from uh, with the divorce from her, her mother's divorce from her father. That's a new journey, a new journey um, into uh, discovering what she can do with her uh, power in the world uh, as early as 11 years old, changing a misogynist uh, dishwashing soap commercial, a new journey of becoming an actress and then a new journey with that fame to uh, to find out if there's some uh, help she can provide to the world. And then uh, and then the uh, likely outcome of the whole thing is that uh, she's an emperor. And so she is someone who wants that power. So I think that's where we're at with that. Now, is she out to destroy the monarchy? Because you can be not evil, and that could be your aim, to destroy the monarchy. So let's see what the four cards for that are going to be. The signifier for that uh, is the Page of Swords. You know, the Page is the least powerful of the court cards. The swords always, for me, are truth and justice. They can be health. They can be rules. And uh, so this looks to me like the signifier card is of Meghan Markle, that right now she's just um, a page of carrying this sword uh, and what it represents for her in this uh, arena that she finds herself in. The, ch the environment that is, as a matter of fact, then, is what? It's the uh, Queen of Cups. And so it's the, uh, the I'm going to say the Queen, the Queen represents, the Queen of England represents the compassion associated with the monarchy. And so the challenge to um, Meghan Markle's um, journey for truth uh, could be uh, the compassion that's felt for the Queen uh, in this regard. The um, hopes and the fears of this then are the Hermit. And so the hermit, we hope that we're seeing the way properly. We're shining a light on the direction that we need to make plans to go in. Okay? And then the likely outcome for this whole thing, good or evil, is have I done enough? But, you know, I guess the the more cynical could, could think this means have I done enough evil. The more generous of us could say have I done enough good. So... Someone has suggested to me that I don't pull enough clarifier cards. Now, I've got to tell you how I feel about clarifier cards. In abundance, you can just keep pulling cards until you get the uh, answer that you want. It's kind of like going to a doctor until, and keep going to the, the doctor that finally tells you what you want to hear. 
um, or going from friend to friend to friend until you find someone who uh, agrees with your opinion of whatever it is that's your beef. But let's pull no more than three uh, clarifiers. And if at any point this seems very defined, then I'll stop them. But no more than three. So the final outcome on this is have I done enough Is it as an evil person or as a generous person? I'm going to shuffle these up a little bit. And we're still talking about Meghan Markle. And she done enough uh, in her voyage. And is it uh, geared towards some evil or is it geared towards some good? No more than three cards. The first one for that is embattlement. Okay, this is a uh, half and half. This doesn't tell us that she's good or bad. It just tells us that there's been a lot of things in her way. She's battled through them and she's still carrying a plan and, and looking um, as if she's ready to initiate that plan. Another card for that, the second of the three, celebrations. Okay, celebrations, uh, you know, this is not an evil card. These are these are uh, generous, uh, um, and as a matter of fact, women, and she seems to be a lot about women, female empowerment, women celebrating. And then the last card that I'll pull for a clarifier on this is the death card. And so the death card is the end of a cycle. And uh, this doesn't denote that she's good or evil. It just says that this um, cycle of embattlement where there have been some uh, some celebrations is coming to an end. So I'm sorry. That's the end of the clarifications that I'll pull. This uh, pull here does not tell me that this is an evil woman it, at all. So that's how I read it. So if you watch my videos, there's an uncanny coincidence of pulling cards that are very relevant to what I'm speaking about. But uh, we'll go over this one again in case I've misinterpreted this or missed something. So I said, is this woman evil? And the first card I get right out of the bat of that, uh, right out of the bat is the sun. The sun is enlightenment. That's not associated with evil. The uh, challenge to that then is uh, a little more selfish, holding on to the value or even the money that you've accumulated. So you'll have to decide how that what that means to you in this respect. But for me, I think anyone who's come from a meager background is going to try to hold on to what they may have accumulated. The um, bottom of this reading was the Nine of Cups, which is sometimes referred to as the Greedy Merchant. And uh, so, But it is uh, indicative of someone who has accumulated success, and they're not uh, embarrassed to display it. The uh, past of this reading then is the Wheel of Fortune, which is, I always interpret the Wheel of Fortune as spinning in a positive direction that can come across some uh, some some problems, and certainly she has. So uh, there's that. And then the top of the reading was the Fool Journeys, and I think this woman is over and over and over again starting new journeys, new journeys, new journeys. The uh, signifier of the whole thing was the Emperor, and the Emperor is um, wielding the power that you have uh, uh, accumulated. Then, just to better define it, let's see, what is the self of, of her right now? And we get a page of swords. And I've got to be honest with you, for me, this is a page of truth and justice. And it's in the environment of what? The compassion uh, for the queen that is out there. And the uh, um, difficulty that these uh, situations may be bringing to her. And the hopes and the fears is that we've shown a light to show us what the plan needs to be. And then the... Uh, final outcome of the whole thing was have you done enough honestly to me this means there's so much injustice in the world there's always more to do but some may feel like she hasn't accomplished her evil mission so i said let's get three clarifiers for that and it started out with being embattled celebrations of women and the end of a cycle so for me this does not tell me that this is an evil woman this is a person who is uh, now in a position to pursue her passions well, I'm Mark. This has been my journey through tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go, so stop on by. Ciao for now.